So welcome to Meet the Therapist. My name is Tracy Butler, the Director of Links to Learning. And today I have the pleasure of introducing you to Prue Watson. Prue is an occupational therapist based in Rockhampton. Um, thank you, Prue, for joining us today. We appreciate you taking time to share your wisdom with us, um, with families. Um, could you tell us, start off with how long you've been working as an occupational therapist? Well, Tracy, I'd have to sort of really tell you some important dates then, and that might be a bit scary, but I've been an OT for a very long time. And um, I was actually one of the first, in the first uh, degree courses in Queensland Uni for OT. So um, a long time and uh, yeah, I've enjoyed it all the way. Yeah, so you've probably gathered a uh, vast library of knowledge um, in those many years um, working with families. Can you tell me when you first learned about the listening program? Well, it was probably a, sort of in that early uh, 2000. From, I think I did the first training in 2002. So I remember seeing something come through um, on an email or a flyer um, that really got my attention. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And what sort of improvements have you seen in the children that you've worked with using the listening program along with your other therapies? Well, look, I, I chose to use the listening program protocol because I really thought that it had the most uh, information and um, evidence behind it at that time. And it seemed to be a really well-structured type of approach. Um, and so I've been using that with families ever since then. And I guess the most you know important um, changes that I've seen is to sort of see children come back when I review them after maybe they've done their listening, you know, one or two cycles and that. And they're so excited because they're feeling more successful in school, they're reading better, they're, they're more tuned in to everything, they're better listeners, they're more engaged, they're, they're, uh, they're more organised. Uh, I can go on and on and on. Yeah, that's great. And can you tell me, Prue, um, how your families specifically implement their daily listening therapy? Like what sort of activities do they do while they're listening? What sort of suggestions do you give them? Look, I think it's really good to be able to tell the families that the children don't have to sit still and just listen. Um, and I have families really explore a range of things. Sometimes they just walk together with their child or they'll let their child just go and swing. <coughs> um, they um, will, you know, often have a range of different sort of uh, table activities that they could do or they might get their favourite puzzles out. Um, but I think the one that probably they all enjoy doing the most is just drawing and colouring and doing stickers and just sort of things that, where they can just slow down and enjoy that moment. And can you tell me if there is any specific measures that you use as a pre and post um, determination of the efficacy of, of what you've done or even from another angle, what sort of, what sort of symptoms you would see in a child that would um, have you think that the listening program may be of benefit to them? Well, I certainly do the pre and post listening checklist that comes with the protocol. Um, and that and that certainly shows changes. Um, but I gather um, from parents, you know, what their observations are. And that includes maybe what teachers have said. And um, I've also been using the um, ScanC auditory processing screener and the TAVs. Um, and, and when I do pre and post in that, certainly we see changes. And I had a little boy just recently that I haven't actually seen for probably 12 months. Um, and he did, a, he did a, a two cycles, I think, of the listening program. And we've seen a real maturity in his ability to, to um, get that sort of uh, signal to noise ratio has now come into the average range. And he's reading better and, you know, he's probably still got a way to go. So we're just renegotiating that again. Excellent. Well, thank you, Prue. And we can see here um, Prue Watson's website where I recommend families visit to um, 
have a good read of the therapies, the different therapies. You can see that Prue, with all her years of experience, is very well versed and can identify what your child's needs are and the best way to help them overcome some of those challenges. Prue can be contacted on her mobile 0404. 461-739. As I said, she's in Rockhampton and you can see her website there, prewatson-ot.com.au. So I encourage you to reach out to Prue and see what she can offer to help you and your child um, overcome some of the challenges that they may be experiencing. And thank you, Prue, for joining us today and, and sharing your wisdom and your knowledge. I really appreciate it. And on behalf of the families that will be viewing this, thank you. Thanks, Tracy. It's been really great to chat with you. Mm -hmm.